teenage killers who commit murder out of love or the misguided perception of love is a very disturbing and tragic phenomenon. These types of crimes are often the result of a very toxic or obsessive relationship that spirals out of control, leading to deadly consequences. The intensity and impulsivity of adolescent emotions, coupled with a lack of life experience and underdeveloped decision-making skills, can create a dangerous cocktail of circumstances that results in horrific crimes. In recent years, there have been several high-profile cases of teenage killers who have committed heinous crimes in the name of love and leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. Just to name a few, there's Gypsy Rose Blatchard, there's Aaron Caffey, who we recently talked about, and unfortunately, that is also the circumstances of today's case. So buckle up, because this one, guys, is a doozy. Hey guys, I'm Annie Elise. This is 10 to Life. Please remember to always do your own research and make your own opinions. Now let's dive right in. Daniel Halseth, a native of Estacada, Oregon, was deeply connected to his home state as his family had a very long history there and he spent his entire younger life in the area. Growing up in Oregon, it had instilled in him a love for the outdoors and he was an avid fitness enthusiast who just enjoyed spending his free time out exploring the wilderness. He often took long walks, traveled to new places, and went hiking, taking stunning photos and videos everywhere he went. Daniel's passion for the outdoors and his talent for photography had earned him a sizable following on social media. He was active on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, where he shared his adventures with his followers. With over 13,000 followers on one platform and around 20,000 on another, he had built a loyal audience who admired his beautiful images and his adventurous spirit. Daniel loved to showcase his travels on social media and was always looking for new ways to inspire others to explore the great outdoors something he loved doing so much. He was a skilled photographer, as evidenced by the majority of his Instagram photos. His final post was taken from an airplane on April 7th, and it appeared to show an aerial view of Las Vegas as he was returning from a recent trip. Beyond his social media presence, Daniel also had a very impressive academic background. He earned his bachelor's degree in music from Western Oregon University, where he played the drums and honed his musical talents. Later on, he pursued a master's degree in business from Corbin University, adding to his skill set and expanding his knowledge in a new field. With a diverse background in both the arts and business, Daniel had a very unique perspective that he brought to all aspects in his life. In March of 2001, Daniel married Elizabeth, and together they have three children. The family moved to Las Vegas in 2006, following Daniel's career aspirations. However, their lives would take an unexpected turn just four years later when Elizabeth was elected to the Nevada State Legislator. Her election was historic, as she became the youngest woman ever to hold a seat in the state's legislative body. With their growing family and Elizabeth's successful political career, the Halseth family appeared to be living the American dream. From the outside, their life seemed absolutely perfect, but Daniel was always open and honest about the fact that things were not always as they seemed. He frequently shared with his friends and followers on social media that his life was far from perfect and that he himself was not perfect either. Despite the challenges that came with balancing work and family life, Daniel was committed to self-improving and constantly striving to be a better man and a better father. Daniel was known for his unwavering love and devotion to his children and always put their well-being first. However, his relationship with his wife began to falter after a decade together 
and their issues became very public in 2011. On October 21st of that year in 2011, Daniel was arrested for open and gross lewdness, following an accusation by his wife that he had attempted to force himself on her. The incident reportedly stemmed from jealousy on her part, while Daniel claimed that he had recently discovered her infidelity. Despite being released almost immediately after his arrest, Daniel was sentenced to six months of probation. The day following Daniel's arrest, he filed for divorce, and the two agreed to share custody of their children. In February of 2012, Elizabeth resigned from her position in the Nevada legislature, citing difficulties with balancing her work responsibilities and being a single mother. Following her divorce from Daniel and resignation from office, Elizabeth was granted primary custody of their three children. She subsequently relocated with her children to Alaska to be with her new partner. In 2020, Daniel and Elizabeth found themselves embroiled in a very contentious custody battle over their children, with tensions running very high between the two of them. Their youngest daughter, Sierra, reportedly struggled with the situation and expressed a strong desire to live with her father. Despite being required to return to her mother's home, Sierra repeatedly found her way back to her father's house, leading to a situation in which she spent the majority of her time with him. Sierra was known to be particularly close with her father. Later on, Daniel got remarried, but unfortunately that marriage didn't work out either, and the two of them ended up getting a divorce. Despite this, they remained very close friends and continued to maintain regular communication. In fact, they even shared a bank account together that was used to pay off mutual debts. Daniel has shared numerous pictures and videos of himself with his daughter, Sierra, throughout the years. In June of 2020, when Sierra was only 15, she met an 18-year-old man named Aaron Guerrero, and the two of them started dating. Their relationship moved at an alarming pace, and before long, they found themselves declaring their love for one another. In their minds, nothing else seemed to matter besides their intense feelings for each other, which you know how it is with that kind of teenage love. You get sucked into the quicksand of it all and you are just enthralled with this other person and you think that they are the only person for you, they're your soulmate, and that's exactly how Sierra felt. She felt like Aaron was the one. But the concerned parents of Sierra and Aaron began to observe a shift in their children's behavior. Daniel, Sierra's father, was particularly worried as he noticed his daughter was becoming increasingly distant and less interested in activities that they used to enjoy together, such as going out to eat at different restaurants and just doing typical day-to-day -day things. Her mood swings also intensified, and she seemed to prioritize spending time with Aaron over everything else. Anything that disrupted their time together was met with frustration and disappointment on her part. Daniel found it very challenging to come to terms with the fact that his daughter was growing up and was experiencing new things. However, things took a turn for the worse when Sierra's boyfriend Aaron's parents discovered that he and Sierra had planned to rob them and run off together. As soon as they learned about that scheme, they immediately alerted Sierra's father Daniel and expressed their concerns. The three of them agreed that it was in everybody's best interest to intervene and to separate this young couple couple, putting a pause to their relationship and preventing them from seeing each other for a while, until things started to settle down a bit and calm down. The separation from Aaron was devastating for Sierra. She felt like her world had completely come crashing down. Now, despite the parents' best efforts, it soon became apparent that Sierra and Aaron were still in contact secretly, and the things that they were discussing were very unsettling. On March 21st, Daniel had posted a few photos of Sierra saying, I love you so much, daughter. You are so strong and brave. I love you. We got this. During the month of April, Daniel also shared several photos and videos that reflected on the memories of when his children were younger. Here's little Sierra Bob being so cute and wonderful because that's what she is. Right, honey? Yeah. And I'm so happy that she's spending some time with Daddy and being so, being so cute. Mm, yeah, yes, you're so cute. She's such a cutie. It's just amazing. Right, honey? And she's got a little ticket number for practice. And uh, order number 70 and pancakes. So it's right there. And as I watched these videos, I couldn't help but wonder if he was feeling nostalgic for the simpler times when his children were younger and he didn't have to worry about their relationships with older men and getting sucked down the wrong path. Perhaps he missed being the sole male figure in his little girl's life and the one who received all of her affection and attention. The tone of his posts suggests that he might be longing for 
a return to a time when life was just less complicated and when his children were still young and innocent. He even commented on this post to somebody saying that Sierra is so strong and incredible even through her adversity. Unbeknownst to Daniel, everything though was about to take a drastic turn. In the early hours of April 8, 2021, Aaron secretly left his home to meet up with Sierra. Together, they finalized their plans and embarked on a course of action that would have irreversible consequences that were just absolutely tragic. Later that day, Daniel's most recent ex-wife noticed some unusual transactions in their shared bank account, which amounted to a little over $1,300. Concerned about the transactions, she immediately attempted to contact Daniel, but to her dismay, she couldn't get a hold of him. Now, this behavior was entirely out of character for him. She was always able to get in touch with him. As the day wore on, this ex-wife's concerns continued to mount. She tried calling him repeatedly, but he didn't pick up the phone. She also reached out to Daniel's mom, Christine, but nobody seemed to know his whereabouts. His mother, Christine, began to take the lead. And despite Christine's efforts to reach Daniel, she too found herself unable to get in touch with him. Worried and anxious, she decided to reach out to Sierra, hoping that she might be able to shed some light on Daniel's whereabouts. When she contacted Sierra, she was told that Daniel's phone was not working correctly and that he was out getting it fixed. Sierra reassured Christine that there was nothing to worry about and that she would ensure that Daniel contacted his mother as soon as possible. However, the next day came and went without any word from Daniel. So Christine's concern deepened and she decided to reach out to Sierra again. But this time, there was no response from Sierra either. The silence was deafening, and it only added to Christine's growing sense of unease. When Christine's attempts to reach Daniel and Sierra failed, she decided to enlist the help of Peggy, a family friend and Daniel's landlord. Peggy agreed to get in touch with Daniel and called him several times, but she received no response. Peggy also decided to contact Sierra, hoping that she could provide some clarity on the situation. Sierra picked up the phone, and Peggy asked to speak with Daniel. Sierra informed Peggy that Daniel was in the shower and had broken his phone, which is why he hadn't been able to answer. She reassured Peggy that Daniel would call her back as soon as he was out of the shower. However, as time passed, there was still no word from Daniel. Peggy continued to call, but Sierra stopped answering her calls altogether. In a last-ditch effort to get a hold of her son, Christine threatened to call the police for a welfare check. It was then that Sierra abruptly hung up on her grandmother, leaving her even more worried and uncertain about what was really going on. Surveillance footage later revealed that Daniel's Nissan Altima had been driven out of his neighborhood. This only heightened the sense of urgency, and Daniel's mother knew that she needed to take action. With no other options left, she dialed 911 and requested a welfare check on her son. He's been missing for two days. His work's called, his family's called, I've called, his ex-wife's called, and there's nobody answering the phone and nobody is, there's, there's nothing. I know there's something very wrong going on here. Daniel's mother also asked Peggy to go to the home and check in on Daniel. Peggy agreed, but she didn't want to go in alone, so she waited for a friend to arrive to go inside with her. When Peggy finally arrived at Daniel's home, she noticed that his car wasn't there and that the front door was left wide open. This immediately raised a red flag for her. Despite feeling uneasy, though, Peggy went inside the house to check in on Daniel. As she walked through the home, she could smell smoke in the air. The scent only grew stronger as she approached the garage. Upon entering the garage, Peggy saw a sleeping bag on the ground. She approached it and was immediately hit with the pungent smell of lighter fluid. To her absolute horror, she and her friend discovered a burnt body inside the sleeping bag. Her friend immediately called 911 and reported what they had found. There's a dead body in the garage. We just found him with the homeowner that doesn't live here. Okay, and you're in there right now? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. The police arrived soon after, and it was immediately clear that something gruesome had occurred here. Their suspicions were confirmed when they found a chainsaw lying on the floor of the living room. Its sharp blades were glistening with blood. In the kitchen, a hand saw was discovered, still bearing bits of skin and tissue in its teeth. As they continued their investigation, they came across a circular saw and two knives lying in the sink, 
along with receipts from Home Depot and an ATM. It was a horrific scene, and it only got worse as they discovered the burnt remains of Daniel's body in that sleeping bag in the garage. The coroner's report revealed that he had been stabbed a staggering 70 times, with 42 of those wounds located on his back. The sheer brutality of the attack was almost unimaginable, and the police were left reeling as they tried to piece together what had happened in that house. One of these wounds had pierced a major artery in his neck, and both of his lungs had been punctured. In addition to the stab wounds, his body had been completely mutilated by saws leaving deep lacerations and disfigurements. After this brutal assault, his body was then stuffed into a sleeping bag and set on fire, causing 40% of his body to be covered in burns. The level of violence and cruelty is almost unimaginable. Sierra and Aaron's disappearance added to the already horrific scene that the police had discovered at Daniel's home. The phone conversations between Sierra, Peggy, and Daniel's mother, Christine, raised suspicions within the family and led police, of course, to investigate further. They followed the trail of evidence left behind in the form of the receipts found in Daniel's home, which led them to obtain surveillance footage from the stores where those purchases were made. The footage revealed Sarah and Aaron buying saws, gloves, and lighter fluid all of which were used to mutilate and burn her father Daniel's body. In addition, footage from Winco captured Sierra purchasing two gallons of bleach with Daniel's card, indicating an attempt to, of course, destroy evidence, and that card had, of course, been used without Daniel's authorization. The ex-wife's concerns about the unusual withdrawals from their shared bank account were now starting to make more sense. As the police were investigating, two individuals approached, stating that they were looking for their 18-year-old son, Aaron Guillermo, who had run away from home on April 8th and they believed that he would be with Daniel's 16-year-old daughter, Sierra. Immediately after discovering the suspicious purchases and identifying Sierra and Aaron as the prime suspects, the police wasted no time in issuing warrants for their arrest. As the investigation unfolded, on April 13th, law enforcement officials found surveillance footage of the duo in Salt Lake City, Utah, 400 miles away from where the crime had taken place. The police officers in Utah had a chance encounter with the couple while they were riding on a Trex train that had pulled into the 900 South Station. Upon checking their tickets, Aaron confessed that he had not paid for his ticket, leading the officers to run a background check. And shockingly, it was revealed that both Aaron and his 16-year-old girlfriend, Sierra, were wanted on a full extradition warrant out of Las Vegas. Despite their heinous crime, the couple was seen openly kissing and displaying affection towards each other while on that train, like they just hadn't brutally murdered Sierra's father. And it gets so much creepier and so much worse, guys. After a thorough search, police were able to locate Daniel's abandoned Nissan Altima. Upon inspection of the trunk, they found a blanket that was covered in blood. They also discovered an extremely disturbing video on Sierra's phone. I don't know what to say. <clears throat> Welcome um, back to our YouTube channel. After day murdering, three. Day three after <laughs> murdering somebody. Wow! Don't put that on the camera. It was worth it. Um, and we had sex a lot today. Mm hmm It was worth it. I got plenty of sex over there. I was paying for doing it. <laughs> and no no bleeding this time. Mm hmm We got we got through that. We we overcame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> you guys, I cannot with this. It's literally giving me Gypsy Rose vibes when they did their little home videos after killing her mother. And it's honestly one of the most unsettling videos I've ever seen. There is no remorse. There's giddiness. There's I don't even know. It gives me the chills thinking about it. So Aaron and Sierra were charged with nine felony counts, including murder, conspiracy, arson, robbery, and the fraudulent use of credit cards. After their arrest, they both were able to obtain lawyers for their defense. The district attorney announced that Aaron could face the death penalty and that they were considering it. But Sierra was exempt from the death penalty due to being a minor at the time of the crime. Despite being charged as an adult, the harshest sentence that she could receive was 20 years to life in prison, 
with the possibility of parole. During the arraignment hearing on June 25th, both Aaron and Sierra entered a plea of not guilty. Uh, Sierra Marie Halseth. The list of charges against 16-year-old Sierra Halseth and her 18-year-old boyfriend Aaron Guerrero includes murder, conspiracy to commit murder, arson, robbery, and fraud. Do you understand the nine charges that you're facing in the indictment? Yes. The teens quietly stand next to each other as they answer the judge's questions. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Not guilty. However, in May of 2022, they both changed their plea to guilty. And as a result, Aaron will now not face the possibility of receiving the death penalty. Daniel's family released a statement. And it says, Daniel Halseth was first and foremost a loving father, brother, and son, who was the heart of the Halseth family. To have him taken from us in such a horrific, savage, senseless, and violent act of murder leaves us heartbroken, and our grief is unyielding. The total lack of remorse on display in the video is both reprehensible and unforgivable. While we are grateful for the work of the detective and the district attorney, we are waiting for justice to be served with the maximum accountability allowed. We loved Dan very much, and we miss him every moment of the day. This is the only statement we will be making, and we ask for privacy and understanding. It was later made known that Daniel's family was deeply hurt when Sierra was not included in Daniel's obituary, which listed all of his other children. Which, to be honest, I kind of understand that. I get why she wasn't included. District Judge Tierra Jones sentenced both Aaron and Sierra to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 22 years. This sentencing happened on October 20th, 2022 just a few months ago. During the sentencing hearing, Sierra spoke to the judge and read from a statement in which she alleged that her father had subjected her to sexual and actual physical assaults and had encouraged her to drink alcohol. She said, my biological father has traumatized me, trauma I still have to work through every day. When Aaron Guillermo addressed the judge, all he said was an apology to Daniel's family. According to court records, Sierra's parents went through that contentious divorce. Sierra's mother, who goes by the name of Elizabeth, was given primary custody after Daniel had filed for divorce back in 2011. However, in 2020, those custody arrangements became that point of dispute and contentiousness between the parents. CPS had interviewed Sierra at one point, according to court records. In videos of family court hearings, the family court judge Charles Hoskin said, something else is going on with Sierra. I don't know what that is, whether that's parental alienation, whether that could be some sort of human selling, whether that's manipulation, I don't know. And I don't know who is to blame for it. Three of Daniel's siblings and his mother spoke at this hearing, expressing their anger towards Sierra. After the hearing, Daniel's mother, Christine, denounced Sarah's accusations, stating that they were nothing but a lie. And not many other family members were coming to Sierra's defense or believing what she was trying to accuse Daniel of. Because during the hearing, several family members expressed their desire for Sierra to receive the death penalty. Ben Halseth, Daniel's brother, presented posters filled with pictures of Daniel when he was young and described him as a great father who only wanted to be a good dad to his children. Tom Halseth, another brother, became extremely emotional as he spoke to the judge, saying that Sierra and Aaron had taken something from him that he could never get back saying, I can hear my brother asking me to forgive, and to be honest, I'm not sure that that's even possible. Months later, Aaron did an interview with the media, and here's what he had to say in that interview. She got the weapon first, and, um, you know, I always carry a weapon, so. Whose idea was it to commit the murder? I would say it was both of our ideas, because we didn't know exactly what we were going to do, but we knew we had to do something about it, and it turned out terribly wrong. I'm sure you can understand it. it, it it's shocking. Oh, yes, it is. It is shocking. And the only thing I could say is an explanation for, you know, such an evil act would be that we were both trying to cope with what happened. And I, I can't say for Sierra, but personally, I feel guilt every day. At the sentencing in October, Sierra offered no apology while Aaron did. Both teens pleaded guilty to murder and were sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after 22 years. 
Guerrero agreeing to speak with us from jail the day after learning his fate and before he would be sent to maximum security High Desert State Prison. He says he hadn't been in much trouble previously. He had suffered from mental health issues and wasn't taking his medication. I would pretend like I would take it and I feel like that has some form of impact on what happened. He also claims he was using LSD, which he says he ordered through websites he didn't want to name. I don't think I would have been capable of something like that um, had I been sober. How do you want to make it up to them? By proving to them that I'm not a monster, that I still have potential to be a functioning member of society. It's truly just a tragic story. I don't know if the allegations that Sierra made against her father are true or not, and it's really not my place to decide, but looking at his social media and watching his videos of him and his children really did pull at my heartstrings. So I am interested to hear what you guys think about that. Do you think that Sierra was in fact assaulted by her father? And if she was, why wouldn't she just go live with her mother and her other siblings? Why make it a point to live with her father unless there was some sort of alienation happening there? Do you think her boyfriend Aaron is a monster? Or was it the drugs overpowering him? Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Do they really have remorse and I don't want to say excuses because there's no excuses, but motives, so to speak, for what they did? Or was the motive that they were just young and love and wanted to be together and were willing to kill anybody in their way? in a very savage and brutal way. Let me know what you guys think. This is one of those cases that always confuses me because although Sierra was charged as an adult, death penalty was taken off the table. And I have a hard time with that because while I know a lot of these cases when minors commit crimes, even if they're charged as adults, that's the way it goes. It just kind of begs the question of, are they born bad? Were they going to do something like this no matter what in their life they just got caught early? So do they deserve the maximum punishment or capital punishment and the death penalty? Or is it because their brain isn't for fully formed that they should not, even if they are charged as an adult? I don't know. Where do you stand on that? Let me know all of your thoughts, guys, below. And if you've heard of other details about this case that maybe I missed, please share them below, too, so that everybody can kind of stay fully informed of this case. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to quickly hit that subscribe button below. It's totally free. It's not a membership or anything like that. It just will make sure that anytime you sign on to YouTube in the future, you'll see my videos so that you don't miss any of the new cases that I post about. All right, thanks again guys, and until the next case, stay safe.